Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. Pinnacle here means extremity, top corner. It would be the highest point in the temple. That's where Satan took, carried Jesus and placed him. It's not a coincidence that Satan placed Jesus on the highest point of the temple. I've never thought about that before. Why a temple and why at the top of the temple did Satan need to take Jesus for the second temptation? It wasn't about the location only. It was what the location represented. When you reach the top of your profession or your vocation, that is when pride can cause you to get lifted up. At the top of the temple, at the top of your vocation, at the top of your profession, that's when pride can get lifted up inside of you to where you fall. bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name, and it's through his name that we come to you today and declare that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You're watching Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery. Today we're bringing you the conclusion of the message we began last week. It is entitled, Our God is a Waymaker. There is so much packed into this message. I want to encourage you to get out the Word of God. Go with me, and let's hear this powerful word from God's throne. That's his word. So if we're trusting in him in this pandemic with all our heart, then guess what he's going to do? And guess what he is doing? And guess what we're doing? We're doing what God said do, and we're doing it, and nothing is stopping us from doing it because we're doing it God's ways. And when you please God and you do things God's way, God will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. Could it be that some are not pleasing God and he's causing that, that rebellion in them is causing God to pull back his grace and the enemy is coming in and withstanding them and they're trying to blame it on God and God says, you're not doing it my way. You're just doing religious service. So the Lord commands us as his children not to be wise in our own eyes. Paul tells us in Romans 12 not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Instead, we are to seek the Lord earnestly, diligently, and lean not to our own understanding, and He will direct our paths. I said this before a few weeks ago. When God does a new thing and it causes fear to come up inside of us, it's not that God has given us a spirit of fear, it's that we're not prepared for what God has told us to do. When we're facing something new, guess what's going to come up inside of us first? Fear. That's why we need to go to God with our faith and ask Him for wisdom. Then He can give us wisdom and He'll direct our steps up out of it. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, not us. So we're to seek God, then He'll show us. Luke chapter 16. I remember when we started 19 plus years ago over in the chapel at a retreat and I got up one Thursday night because we had the meetings on Thursday evening so people could go to where they were going to church on Sunday and not miss service and the Lord laid this on my heart and I have lived by this ever since. I stood outside the pulpit. I said, this is not a work of man. It's time for God to get what he wants done in his church. And this is going to be a work of God. And with everything in my being and Debbie's being and every leader that has committed to this work has striven to do this God's way. And... When you do it God's way, it's going to require a lot of prayer. One of the hardest things for Christians to do is pray earnestly and to pray often. And so we had to learn to pray. 
And because it was all new to me, I'd go off for several days and pray and seek God's face, say, God, I don't know what to do. Nobody gave me a handbook. You gave me a word. He said, that's all you need. And so I, I began seeking the Lord. And week after week, month after month, Elder Jack and some of the founding members can attest to this. God would give me the same message, obedience. I got so sick of preaching obedience because people got so tired of it. There's people leaving. Maybe they weren't obedient. <laughs> but people are critical of churches. They really are. I ain't talking about sinners. I'm talking about Christians are critical of churches. And I talk to people, ministers, and they'll criticize what churches or denominations are doing. And it basically boils down to, are they doing what God said, or are they doing what their denomination says, or what they think people want? If they're doing what man wants and what the flesh, their own flesh wants, then they're not pleasing God. And they're going to produce an Ishmael in the body that they're leading. Because you're not teaching them to go to the source. You're teaching them to come to... And it will cause them to get division, double vision. And so the Lord says... You're not leading them to you. You're leading them to me. And the only way you can lead them to him, to the Father, and not lead them to yourself, is to teach them obedience to God. What that does is takes me out of the loop. What did God tell you? What did God say? Well, I just don't feel like, what did God say? Well, I just, I just is God telling you? I don't care what God, whoa, now we're getting somewhere. That's how you produce Ishmael's in your life. And that's why Isaac can't be conceived. And that's why the body of Christ in many places are not where they need to be and doing what they should be doing the way that they should be doing it. Because people are not seeking God. Luke 16, 1. There was a certain rich man who had a steward. An accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So the Lord, or the master, rich man, called his servant and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. See, he's counting his options. I have resolved what I will do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. So not only is he cheating his master, his Lord, he is placating to those that had no wrong in their life except they owed his master so he says in order to gain favor with the people lest I get kicked out of my stewardship I will make it look like I'm doing them a favor but really he is serving self then he said to another and how much do you owe and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said to him take your bill and write eighty so the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly for the sons of this world 
are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. This is Jesus talking. The, the children of this world are wiser in their ways, King James says, than the children of light in their generation. He's not commending them for being embezzlers. He is not commending them for doing wrong. He is commending the children of the world because they will use wisdom. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous manna, then you will fail. They may receive you into everlasting, in, their, in an everlasting home. So that is the end of somebody who is corrupt. So we need to learn something from this. Because as I said Wednesday night, it needs to be repeated. Christians in America have it the best that you could possibly get it on earth. We have our forefathers that paid a dear price. Most of them went bankrupt or died to see the vision of America come into being. We have the republic based on a constitution. The constitution is founded upon the very principles out of the word of God. We have every bit of that going for us. We have a structure of government that has up to my generation has always been for God and, and faith and for the church. We have had leaders that were for God, for faith and the church. We have had everything for us as Christians and yet we sit idly by and let the children of this world take away our liberties one after the other without one shot fired. And we had everything given to us that we needed to keep this nation safe from tyranny and apostasy. You think God's going to hold us responsible? So to get this steward, to get himself out of hot water... He used wisdom to make a way for himself that he wouldn't be removed from his position. Obviously, he had squandered some of his Lord's goods for himself, and he had to cover his tracks, being short on his report. This is a great illustration of how the people of the world are generally the ones with the most money and power. They're shrewd. They're very shrewd. And because they're so shrewd and so divisive and so wise... They take advantage of Christians who have no wisdom but have faith. They use wisdom, the world does, not faith. Did you hear what I said? The world uses wisdom, not faith, to get where they are today. Jesus tells us that the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. So let me ask you this question. If the earth is the Lord's and its fullness, then why is most of the earth owned or controlled by wicked and unrighteous people. Here's why. You ready? Wisdom is at work in them. They're just using it for evil. If people of faith are still destroyed from a lack of knowledge, then how important should seeking the Lord for wisdom be for us as Christians? Especially when we're surrounded by wolves who have degrees. It's hitting home and getting real quiet. Matthew chapter 4. I won't take much longer. Verse 5. Then the devil took Jesus up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written... He, God, shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. To this Jesus answered and said to him, It is written again, You shall not, what? You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Pinnacle here means extremity, top corner. It would be the highest point in the temple. That's where Satan took carried Jesus and placed him. It's not a coincidence that Satan placed Jesus on the highest point of the temple. I've never thought about that before. Why a temple and why at the top of the temple did Satan need 
to take Jesus for the second temptation. It wasn't about the location only. It was what the location represented. When you reach the top of your profession or your vocation, that is when pride can cause you to get lifted up. At the top of the temple, at the top of your vocation, at the top of your profession, that's when pride can get lifted up inside of you to where you fall. Then when you get pride and it enters our hearts, we may tend to then think too highly of our own opinion and this can cause us to fall, hence the condition of America right now. The other lesson we can learn from this is that Satan tempted Jesus to put God to the test. You don't do that. This is where the Lord wants me to drive home this point. If we try to do what we've always done, during this season of trials, we are literally tempting God and putting him to the test, and it will not bode well for us. Therefore, we must begin today to humble ourselves, seek his face, so that he can then give us wisdom and guide us safely through the attacks that are being launched at us as the body of Christ. Almost done. Proverbs chapter 9. Isn't God faithful to us? He gives us what we need, not what we're wanting. Proverbs 9, verse 7. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself. Words to live by. And he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will what? He'll love you. Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will cr increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the very beginning of wisdom. So if the body of Christ is lacking the wisdom to get through the storms and we're abdicating our authority because we do not have the wisdom to overcome the children of this world and their wisdom, then that tells me that the body of Christ is first lacking fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Fear in this verse is about giving God the reverential respect that is due to him as God and Lord. It's not about being scared of him. If we refuse to fear God, then we will, he will allow us to undergo things that will humble us. If we refuse to fear God, he will allow us to undergo things that will humble us. Are we going through anything that is causing us to humble ourselves? Yes. Yes. I mean, for what, almost two months, we couldn't go outside our house without fear of reprisal? It wasn't just the it, law enforcement. It was people. People getting on social media. I saw so-and-so out in the, well, what were you doing out there to see them? <laughs> he did that, God did with his own people did he not according to Deuteronomy 8 allow them to suffer things in the wilderness to teach them to respect and to honor him as God yes he doesn't correct us to destroy us so don't think this pandemic is here to destroy us from God it's not but to set us free from self-sufficiency that is good that right there, I wish I could just stop right there and say let's pray God does not correct us to destroy us. He corrects us to set us free from self-sufficiency so that we won't tempt him. When we should be led by him. Perhaps the Father isn't delivering us from the trials as quickly as he once did because he wants us to learn to fear him and, God, and through godly fear begin to walk in godly wisdom. When we walk in God's wisdom as Jesus did, then we will be able to overcome our enemies. Think about that. 
when we walk in godly wisdom as Jesus did, whatever was in Jesus, we have access to. Then we will be able to overcome our enemies like he overcame his. God's wisdom silences our enemies. You can use one word from God and it'll shut down a host of enemies. Because God's wisdom confounds God's enemies. It puts them to shame because they have nothing in which to come back with. And that shames them. So what do you need to be asking God for? Wisdom. John chapter 8. This helped you today. Verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again to the temple. And all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? This they said, what? Tempting him, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stoo stoo uh, stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, tempting him, putting him to the test, he raised himself up and he said to them one word of wisdom that shut them all down. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And every one of them from the oldest to the youngest departed and left the woman alone with the Jesus. Throughout the Gospels and especially in the Gospel of John, Jesus was constantly challenged and even threatened by the religious leaders of his day. They called most of what he did into question. They scrutinized him and examined the things that Jesus did or said very closely. If you want to know what that looks like today, I want to invite you to watch a White House briefing when the president is at the podium and the press is questioning him about his decisions over this nation. They scrutinize. And they will get on something and they will ride that thing until they push him to the boiling point. See, what we need to be praying for our president is first that he fears God. Secondly, that he, he lets God give him the wisdom not to get back at the enemies, but to silence the enemies. Many times the Pharisees who interpreted the law of Moses use the law to forbid Jesus from doing God's will. Wow. I know God loads y'all down, but get a CD. <laughs> Many times, the Pharisee who interpreted the law of Moses used the very law to forbid Jesus from doing God's will. Now, isn't that a quandary? That would be just like some people in power taking the Constitution and using it, which, one gave, which used to give us liberties, now to restrain us from our liberties. And you say, what person in the right mind would let some pharisaical lawyer do that to them? When you get an answer to that, come back and tell me. They threw up hindrances. The Pharisees did, the scribes, the Sadducees. And they set traps for Jesus, seeking to catch him off guard or in a lie, as they did here. But nothing, say nothing, they attempted to do against him was able to prosper. Nothing. In the legalistic society that we've become in America, the church and leaders in it have got to seek God more than ever for his wisdom. So that we can continue to do God's will in the earth. Jesus has already prophesied that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. God's already, Jesus already declared that in the earth. 
The gate, my, I'm going to build my church on who I am and who people are in me. And through that revelation of who I am, I am going to build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church that I shall build. Because they will know in whom they have believed. And I will give them wisdom to silence their enemies. May the Lord perform today this word in the body of Christ. In conclusion, Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. It will not ha happen any time sooner except until all the nations have been witnessed to by the gospel of the kingdom. Our God is a way maker. He is a way maker. Right? And for 2,000 years, the church has been persevering. In Asia, where they take Christians out and they kill them. And the church had to go in underground. They still made a way. God's still doing, God gave them wisdom on how to go underground and how to do church secretly and still be effective evangelists and minister to their communities without getting killed. It's not an obstacle, it's an opportunity. For God to give us wisdom that will silence our enemies so that we can overcome this and God will make a way through all of this. I sense by the Holy Spirit that God has really ministered to you through this word. It's amazing how God is able to show us, bring revelation out of his word that helps us to understand that we need to seek him even when we don't feel like it. Even when it feels like the world is against us. That's even more the reason why we should take time out and seek him diligently because Hebrews tells us those who diligently seek the Lord will find him and he will reward us because he's a good father. There was so much to this message. I hope you were able to watch it in its entirety over the last two weeks. But if you were not, please contact our church office. Ask for the sermon by name. Our God is a way maker. And we'll get it out to you as promptly as possible. The information will be at the bottom of the screen. And we'll give you an opportunity if you have uh, any prayer requests, any praise reports. Maybe God's been doing some things in your life that you've already previously let us know about. We've been agreeing with you in prayer. We have seen God do some powerful things through this media called television and how God uses us to connect our faith with you so that he can move mountains out of your way. We would love to hear from you. Contact us, either church office or email us. We'll be glad to uh, be a part of what God wants to do in your life through prayer. And before I leave you today, I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider if you've been watching the television ministry of Keys to Kingdom Living for a while, you know our integrity. You know that I back everything with the Word of God. Would you prayerfully consider being a, a partner financially with this ministry so that we can reach the nations of the world with God's help? Pray about it. Ask the Lord, what can I do to help reach the nations? Go on our website, whcnorth.org. There you can find out all the resources that you need to be able to connect with us. Until this time next week, keep looking up. Because we know our redemption is drawing nearer. God bless you.